Are you happily married and madly in love with your spouse, but, and I want to emphasize but, because you wish that you could reignite some of the passion that you felt early on in that relationship. Has sex slipped down your list of priorities or perhaps fallen off the list altogether? Well, welcome to The Ron Hall Show. And joining me today in the studio for our very special Valentine's Day episode is my lovely wife, Beth, and our friend, Dr. Natasha. You know, she is a very famous sex therapist and clinical sexologist. She was also a former radio host who has counseled thousands of couples through her radio show and her private practice. Also, she has written two life-changing books, Vitamin O, bet you'll figure out what that one's about before long here, and A Little Bit Kinky, A Couple's Guide to Rediscovering the Thrill of Sex, both available on Amazon. Today's show is going to be a little bit unique because it's going to be a two-part episode. In part one, we're going to help you identify some problems and help you move sex up your list of priorities. And in part two, which you can find by clicking on the link to Patreon, Dr. Natasha will help us explore our fantasies that will enrich our relationship and make our lives a heck of a lot more fun and maybe even a little bit kinky. Part two is kind of the first, it is actually the first of the uh, exclusive content that we're going to be offering our listeners. And every month, our uh, Patreon supply, uh, supporters will uh, get access to bonus content and, and opportunities to participate in Q&A sessions. So if you like it, keep uh, subscribing and keep uh, coming back because we may have Dr. Natasha back on to answer all the questions that maybe we create today. But if you enjoy the show, you know, please leave a review and join our YouTube channel or subscribe and follow us on all social media at The Ron Hall Show. Now, meet Dr. Natasha and my Valentine, Beth. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, honey. <laughs> thank you. <Yeah. laughs> I love you guys. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh. We love you too. <laughs> what a great way to start off February. And You're yes. a life-changing friend. We love you. Yes, so. absolutely. But here, there is a big elephant in the room. You may not see it. I know there's an iceberg behind me, uh -huh. and that has nothing to do with our relationship. Yeah, we want so to melt that. We yeah. want to melt the hot. ice. Uh, we're going to get hot today. You're going to see that just kind of go away, a little global warming here today. Yeah. In the yes. background. But um, there's a big elephant in the room because people are watching that have never been to a sex therapist or sexologist. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds very uh, intriguing and, and, uh, and uh, I don't know, exciting. But uh, they want to know really what goes on in a sex therapist's office. Are people there having sex? Or tell us what happens in a sex therapist's office. I know, and everybody thinks that, by the way. Everybody thinks they book an appointment with me and then I, I demonstrate how to give oral sex <laughs> or I, or I um, you know, take off my clothes somehow and show you how to do something sexually. And that's not the case at all. It's like, going to a regular therapist yeah. and usually I work in conjunction with other therapists mm -hmm. because most a lot of therapists don't have the specialization that I have mine is all about sex wow. so they'll work with the couple and then when when the couple has or it goes into the sexual area and um, if it's light and they can't solve it, then they send them to me. Nice. And basically, I'm sitting there behind a desk and they're sitting there in front of me and we have a discussion. And a lot of so much of it is just education, mm -hmm. teaching people about their bodies, how their bodies work. Um, what their bodies do sexually, and um, and then then going back, like how did you get this way? How do you have some of these negative thoughts about sexuality, and, and we get rid of those, and then how do we go forward? I mean, there's a million issues, as yeah. you might know. So it's like we just tackle every issue uh, one at a time, but so much of it is just education. Wow. So they have to be ready to come in and learn and do some reading and do some homework. Fun homework. Fun homework. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and knowing all of this right now, and our listeners are probably going to be very surprised that you are just a soccer mom also. Yes, so, <laughs> yes. You yes. have a very normal life. I just do. Married with children. So this is absolutely a, a, I do. A, a crazy profession that people don't just really get what it's all about. So No, and I have to say, I was playing um, tennis the other day on this tennis team, and this, this woman comes over from the other team and goes, where's the sex therapist? Which is the one that's the sex therapist? <laughs> 
she left and yeah, me. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's me. That's me. <laughs> it's just oh, so funny. I bet she nearly died. Yeah, yes. that, like they'd heard that a sex therapist played Whoa, on the TV. Oh, had to whisper. Yes. Yeah. It's funny how when you talk about sex, you have to whisper. Yes, you yes. Have to be so secretive like, about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I bet being a sex therapist, you get invitations to many dinners because I'm sure you're a very interesting conversationalist well you know what it's funny though i can i, I always um even when i sit down at a table i can hear sometimes people go oh there that's that's her that's her that's her that's <laughs> it's her. like a star but when i lived in la i swear i got an invitation to every party you could i mean just everything imaginable because people wanted to say oh that's my friend she's a sex therapist yes. so i've sat next to you know people like Mick jagger mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and and you know I, yeah, I dated him for a little while and so and i mean i've Whoa. i've had all kinds of interactions with yeah. all kinds of people because of my career choice yes. for sure i yes. bet you were really good at charades <laughs> yes um i can be strip charades <laughs> oh well let's dive into kind of helping our our listeners and audience today okay. um what do you say the most common reasons are that couples come to see you for sex therapy? Okay, and I'm also, um, my specialty, uh, I can help all kinds of people, but sort of over the years, it is it is really turned into helping heterosexual couples okay. um, get their groove back. There so when you, you get together, when in the beginning, it's easy. Uh, your brain actually, when you first start being intimate with somebody, your brain produces a chemical called phenylethylamine. And it's, apparently it goes away in six months. Oh, oh no. So so, so you're, you're literally having a reaction, like your brain's doing something, it's making you attractive and attracted to this person and everything. It, it actually do, it doesn't really matter if you think back, like necessarily what's going on, but it, cause just the intimacy alone is creating this reaction in the two of you. So then that happens and then maybe six months, maybe, you know, maybe it's, it, um, it can wear off a little bit. Maybe you can extend it, but um, I believe that you can extend it out okay. by, by doing new things. And so couples okay. really, the number one complaint from couples is that after they have been together, because nobody really complains in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know, or sometimes they do. Sometimes they'll be like, okay. oh, it was awful. What can <laughs> I do to make that better? Because I really like him or I really like her. But, but usually in the beginning, it's just all exciting. Then after you've been together with somebody for, and that depends whether it's uh, six months, a year, two years, three years, five years, 10 years, uh, then people start complaining of frequency. So are you saying that that chemical actually leaves your yes, body? Yes, it goes away. So, so how do I you? heard, I heard re uh, not too long ago that the number one food that you eat that causes you to lose your sex drive in women mm -hmm. is wedding cake. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just He's the a cake. smart Alex. That's yes. just the cake. Yeah. If you eat the frosting and you rub the frosting <laughs> oh, in certain places, yeah. you can bring it back. A little spring. No, but I believe that's what the that's what the creativeness is for. Oh, if you okay. create and create a new memory, okay. and then and and then and then kind of mess around with like um, trying new things that it's the new things that create a new response okay. in somebody's brain. Okay. Yeah. So, so that is what, you know, a little bit kinky is for. It's to give yeah. you, it's an idea book to give you ideas because let's face it. I mean, you don't, you, there's, there's so much to try, but I get asked a lot, but, but what, what, what is yeah. there to do? What am I supposed to do? And how do I do that? Well, I know that sexless marriages seldom survive. So at what point do couples uh, reach in their relationship that they realize that they need to seek help from a professional like you? Right, so it happens pretty quickly. Apparently right. there's no such thing as the seven year itch. Okay. If you're, uh, it happens usually between the second and third year. And I, I see with my, my clients in the past, it's been more like three years. With okay. About three years later, people start to complain, they settle in, they have kids or not but they're just comfortable. They're just become comfortable and they kind of ignore each other and they get lazy. So, you know, if you're, if uh, your marriage is a priority, then um, you have to, uh, you have to be able to talk about sex. You have to be able to do the following. You have to be able to turn to your partner and go, honey, are you happy? Are you getting all the sex that you need from this relationship? If you can't do that, then you will, probably have an issue. Yeah. You have to be able to have those exchanges. Yeah. You have to be able to go, um, you know what, I don't, like, I don't like doing that, but I like doing this. <laughs> okay. Because um, there's actually, I don't like doing, like, I have not done everything in my book. 
But um, over the years of having uh, my radio show and doing all, lots of other radio shows, mm -hmm. people have sent in suggestions and they were so good that I included them in my oh, book, right. but I haven't done them all. And some of them I'm like, no way, I can't do that. But you know, Jill down the block loves doing that. <laughs> so I know because she told me so. She loves doing that with her husband. So, you know, it maybe there's other people that yeah. will like doing that. So it's just reading, educating yourself, finding out um, what you like to do, and then, and then playing. And then mm. also the big one is not to get. This is a huge one. Okay. Not to get. Try not to get your feelings hurt if something oh. doesn't work out. Oh, okay. um, and so if you're afraid that he or she is not gonna like that, talk about what you're gonna do first and at, say, honey, do you think you'd like that? Would you like to try that? And if it's a like, no, <laughs> then you know, move on to the next idea. Yeah, but if it's a like, yeah, I think so, yeah. then that's your, that's your uh, red light. Right. I mean, your green light. I'm sorry, that's your green mm -hmm. light. Yes. 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 What is the, the number one thing that wives really want from their husbands? You know, honestly, they want you just to know, and which is not possible. So, so that's already like setting up the relationship and the marriage for, up mm -hmm. for failure. Yeah. So I cannot tell you how many times I hear, oh, I just want him to know how to please me. Yeah. I just want him to know everything I like and everything I want. And, and that's so to the ladies out there, that is not possible. <laughs> you like something and you can't tell them, then write it down. Put it on a post-it note. Sure. You have children, put it in, you know, mm. send a private email or a private text, but you have to let your man know exactly what you like. Take all the but, guesswork out. Yes, you really do. And if that sounds unsexy or if that doesn't sound very spontaneous, because I get that question too, then what you can do is say sometime in the next week or in the next 24 hours, I would like you to do blank <laughs> and then and that, but yeah but that yeah. does create you don't know when it's coming but it's coming or hopefully and and uh and then everybody has to be open to um to uh a little bit of constructive criticism and not like grading nobody yeah. gets a grade we yeah. all get an a plus for trying oh, good. but more like a, i really liked what you did there but if you would move a little over to the left, <laughs> I really like that. No, you know what I mean? You have to be able to communicate. So yeah. I would say, again, in those top three things of what you have to do to have a flourishing, great sex life and relationship marriage is you have to be able to communicate. Your partner has to hear you. Yeah. I guess uh, leaving a note in their briefcase, uh, maybe when they open it up at the office the next morning and there's a big note there said, this is what I'm going to do to you tonight. Ooh, that would yes. be exciting. No, I mean, like in my book, I always used to, when I, when I did radio, I always just tell people is if you find something you like, you go, or you could rip up the book if you wanted, you could rip out the page and sure. put the page yeah. in there. Oh, yeah. And you could even scratch out the parts you don't like and the parts you do like, you know, and circle yeah. the parts or highlight the parts you do like. Yeah. So you have now just constructed something in the way that you want it to be performed on you, with you, for you. Maybe that's why there were some pages missing from uh, the book that we got. Oh, you noticed. <laughs> <laughs> or you can even slap it on a copier. Or yeah. you can even write down your own version. This is just, these are just, there's like 365 ideas in there. One for oh. every single day, and one, they're just to get you thinking and started. Oh. And doing. And doing, yes. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, um, what's the number one thing you would say husbands want from their wives if wives want the communication? I'm glad you asked that. Yes, I mean, it's a two-way, e mm -hmm. equal street. So. Well, it's kind of very similar. So, so again, not, not every man is comfortable saying, uh, why don't you desire me? Why don't you want me? Why don't you come on to me? And so that's a bit, that's a huge one. I know a lot of men walking the planet that feel undesired because their significant other does not come on to them and just waits for them to come on to them. So, so, and then that kind of leaves this feeling in them that they feel undesired or unwanted. So I think to, you love your guy, right? You love Absolutely. him. Absolutely. So you want to build him up and you want to be kind and you want to do the next kind thing and the next, next sexy thing. And if you've been with that with your man for a while, you kind of know what they like, right? I mean, you do. Sure. You do know. Yes. So some of that, if we don't want to do it, we just kind of you know, put it over right. there and we end up just doing what we want to do. Yes. But that's not, that's not a good, that doesn't make for a good relationship or a good sex life. 
we want to do what they like. Yeah. And so you have to find out, again, this goes back to communication, you have to find out what he likes in the bedroom, what he likes between the sheets or mm -hmm. at a hotel room or, yes. <laughs> or what, you know, yeah. what's, and it has to be specific. Yes. And, yes. and then, all, and if you, if that's something that you don't want to do or aren't comfortable, then come up with, with other things until you hit on something that you both want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, my Christian uh, men friends feel uncomfortable talking about this, and sometimes they, they try to read the Song of Solomon, and maybe they use the words and metaphorical expressions a little wrong by telling their wife that their breasts look like two young goats or something <laughs> like that, you know. Maybe that was the wrong approach. Well, you know, words are everything. <laughs> so uh, I, I cannot tell you, speaking of words, I can't tell you how many people have been during the act, they're making love, and then their significant other says something, and they're like, huh? Like, what? Like, so not everybody even likes speaking during sex, but yeah. if you don't know that, th th you need to find that out. You need what? to find out what kind of words your partner likes to yeah. hear you speak yes. during sex. What, oh, so, uh, and I'll tell you and a personal story. Speaking of trash, don't ask if you did, did you take out the trash, right? <laughs> no, no, all right. You can talk some trash, but don't hey, be asking. Can, can I paint that, can I paint that bathroom gray? Yeah. <laughs> you know, can I paint Fifty shade? Uh, <laughs> so, so, no, it's important. You gotta ask questions. Okay, I know a lot of my friends have been married a long time mm -hmm. and, um, and happily married, but mm -hmm. maybe they have lost the spark. So what's a few things that the couples that have been married a long time can do to bring back a little spark into uh, the lives after many, many years of marriage? Okay. And one thing is through fantasy, but here's the thing. You can, you can combine reality with the fantasy. So go back to the time when you first got together okay. and when it was just awesome. Like you may, probably made out a lot. People stopped kissing, by the way, and that's some of the best foreplay ever. Mm -hmm. So a lot of couples, I would say almost close to in the 90 percentile range, stop kissing the longer they are together. So um, bring, all, bring those things you used to do in the very beginning back. And, and maybe even some of the places you used to go. And the, um, maybe your style of making love has changed over the years. Maybe it's just kind of, you know, mechanical or mm -hmm. the same old, same old. And do something just a little bit different. And, it, and you would be surprised how many non-sexual, things that you think are non-sexual can be really sexual. Like uh, putting a towel, this is kind of, different, but putting a towel in the, uh, especially in the winter, in the, in the dryer and heating it up and making it really warm, not overly hot. And then have your, you know, have your lady lie, lie back and then put the warm towel over her wow. and they, and then lay on top of her and then just like, just make out. And wow. it's like just a form of foreplay. And then, but it's like, also it's like, what is he doing? And what's <laughs> happening next? And what's going on here? And then slowly peeling the towel back. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how graphic we can get, but <laughs> yeah. you know, you could incorporate a toy and you don't have to do, I would say only do one or two things each time that are different. Okay. Do not do like 10 things, right. you know, do like one or two things. Uh, and, and do them slowly, don't do them rushed. Um, incorporating a toy would be fun, like I just mentioned, but uh, the, a big mistake people make is they go to a, a toy store and they get something really large. And mm -hmm. it's best to have, get something really small, actually. Yeah. Uh, the, the toys that all my girlfriends fight over uh, are the little bitty bullets, and they're, mm -hmm. they're little bitty tiny vibrating bullets, and Maybe we can talk about later how to use that in another show, <laughs> but um, but but just start part off. two. Yeah, part two. Part two. And then um, and then so so a third thing would be it to um, to uh, role play, and um, you can also think of a scenario. I'll, I'll tell you one that my husband and I use. So when we first met, he was uh, in his fraternity house. Yes. And uh, I was with someone else, and he was with uh, he had a girlfriend, and that's when we first met. But we never forgot that first meeting. Mm -hmm. So our huge fantasy, and we sometimes we 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 have told each other that that's what we were thinking of, and we without telling each other before, and we use that fantasy. We play it out as if we met and we dumped our significant those others, and then we got together okay. and we made love that night we first met. And so that becomes like a reality entwined with fantasy. Right. And I'm telling you, it works. It works. You know, it works. Yeah. Things like that work. Bring back some of the scenarios of when. 
of when you um, had some great times together or when you first met or or some some yeah just imagine imagine him naked yeah. or, or you know why can't you skinny dip we're not too old to skinny dip right you know you have access to a pool <laughs> yes yes or shower together or shower yeah. together yes and just soak and each then other once up you start and... thinking these ways it gets easier yeah. it gets easier yeah, because I think sometimes people are uncomfortable. They say getting started is the hard part. And so maybe you have that desire to want to do these things. You just have to find the courage. And, right. And, and it's, it's, it's your partner, so it should be a safe place to express yourself right. and take chances. And, and not, you, know, you can express yourself a million ways. You can express yourself through music, through books. And, mm. and you know, there's a million books about sex these days. Just, just go to the bookstore, a bookstore, go online. Even if you don't get my books, there's hundreds of how-to sex books. Oh, yeah. There, you, there's really a limitless uh, source to pull from for ideas. You know, we should have had this show a year ago because after being locked down for one year together, I mean, I don't know how hard that's been on relationships. For hours, it's been fantastic. I have never enjoyed Beth any more in my whole life than being 24-7 with her for the last year. And uh, it's been fantastic. Yeah, for us too. Yeah. And so, but for many people, I mean, it's caused divorces. They, they didn't really realize uh, how to deal with each other and not used to being that much closeness. But I mean, what is your take on uh, the relationships and how difficult was it during COVID for people to stay married and stay hooked up? So. Well, and it'll be interesting to see how many COVID babies we have. Oh, yeah. But I think I've heard both. I've heard I've heard actually more people being at home and having fun and just sort of embracing embracing yeah. that. But um, some people need a lot of space, uh, and I think that's that's fine. I think it's knowing what you need and how to get your needs fulfilled. If you need space to be attracted to or to ha you know to break away from your husband or wife. Then uh, you know there's man caves and, and woman yeah. caves and and uh, you and make sure that you or the, you know if you have an office in your room, uh, make sure that you get you have your time for yourself. Mm -hmm. But you would be surprised what people fight what they fight over over COVID lockdown is the same thing they fight over okay. when it doesn't happen. <laughs> and it's stuff like okay, I'm tired of making dinner every night. That's not sexy. I'm tired of washing the dishes. After I wash the dishes every night, I really don't feel like having sex, you know, or so, you know what I mean? So if it, sometimes it can be as simple as like, hey, let's be a team. Let's get so this So that's stuff when done. the husbands should start washing dishes and cooking dinner. You would be surprised yes. how helpful and how sexy some women find that, oh, yeah. that act, right? Yes. I mean, it's so simple. Or just, you know what? Honey, I can tell you've had a hard day. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the kids and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go grab something to eat. That's you right. do what you gotta do, you know, just relax. A little self time. Yeah, a little yeah. self time. And you you'd be surprised mm -hmm. how those daily um, daily routines, like a yes, break right. in the daily routine, have yes. been very helpful. Like I am going to call a masseuse to come over and give you a massage uh, while I do the laundry. How about even that? Even better. <laughs> even sure better. Going, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Right? <laughs> even better. And then, and then yeah. I have heard. You know, we've all heard people breaking up because yeah. they've they've. Um, and I think you know what I think that is is uh, they were using those excuses kind of to be away from each other because they were they're you're growing apart and not recognizing that you really do need a date night probably one or two nights a week and if mm -hmm. you and that can look however you like but you really do like couples it's so easy really to grow apart and throw all these other obligations but if it's really important to you to keep for you to keep your marriage together Sex is a part of it. Now, do you have to have re every single day? Put it on the calendar. <laughs> right? No, I mean, that's fine. If yeah. you, you know, I, I know if I, if I don't, if we are not intimate at least three times a week, mm -hmm. I have the biggest bear living at home. Yeah. I mean, oh my gosh, it's just not worth it. And you know what? <laughs> All of my needs are met. I'm the happiest <laughs> wife on the planet. And he really asks for very little. So yeah. it's like, it's, it's easy and it's become fun. And now I even set my alarm because he said, it's best at 8.30. So my alarm goes off every morning at 8.30 a.m. And you know what? We get busy. He sounds hey. like 
every other man I know. <laughs> I, I think I think in some ways men are a little bit easier yeah. to satisfy. Mm -hmm. um, not simple. all, not all men, yeah. but I do think sometimes that that holds true. Yes. Yeah, sometimes so. they say, "Feed me and blank me." <laughs> yes, <You know>? exactly. <laughs> Pretty much can satisfy a man. Exactly. Fill their bellies and exactly. everything else, and there you go. It's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, there's some things too that after you've been together a long time, and we can all think of, our audience can think of this as like, oh, well, you used to do this. Like, have you ever heard, well, you used to do that. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you don't do it either. And I'm like, do you still want that? Uh, I was like, oh, good, because I don't really want to do that either. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound like a, like a conversation yeah. anybody's had before? <laughs> so remember, Everything is a negotiation. It's exactly. okay and to negotiate when it comes to your sex life. Right. And a lot of those things that we did early on were a result of taking shots. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. No, and I am sober now. Do you know? I mean, I had to retrain myself oh, yeah. to be to be fun in bed again yeah. after being after getting sober because yeah. I you would be I mean alcohol like it actually increases testosterone in women by it gives us a little bump up. Oh, yeah. So I I mean I to like just <laughs> you know so so yeah okay so in your book a little bit kinky which by the way for our audience this book is really cool I have read it and what I like about it is that it will explain kinkiness in the level that is comfortable for you you've got kinky kinkier and kinkiest so you will definitely find something that will work and whatever makes you feel comfortable but in this book you talk about something very interesting we all know about the g-spot which is the magical spot in a woman but what about the we spot so the we spot okay so i actually think there's 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 lots of we spots okay and getting back to kind of what i said earlier when you think back to maybe a place or a hotel or somewhere where you had the best sex of your life with your significant present other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we think back to those places yes. and revisit them. And those are your we spots. But remember too, that every single sexual response we have begins right here. So you can create we spots in the brain. So you, say if you go to, to dinner and, um, this is a good dinner book. So my book is really a book that you do. Right. It's not necessarily a book that you read and do. You can read and do it, but you it's a book you do. And again, skip whatever you're not comfortable with. Exactly. But take it to, you know, this would be a good, if you're in a remote corner of a restaurant and you start flipping through it and going, this is what, even I do it. Even I use my own book and be like, ooh, honey, we haven't done this. Or it's been a long time. Look. Yeah. And I, I'll be like, ooh, I want you to do that to me. Yes. You know? I, mean, I like so, the way you, you, you grouped it. Yeah. You know, so if maybe people that are a little more conservative, right. you know, they can stay in the front of the book and they can know to look in those pages and but if they right. want to feel a little courageous, they can venture off into the kinkier, kinkier. Into the crazier yes. part. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And, um, you know, it's, I don't think, uh, again, it, you have to be comfortable with whatever you do. That's why it's important and that's why you can, there's some things you know that you don't have to talk about and there's some things that you will have to be a little discussion. Yes. Yes. I keep thinking of our wee spot is when I took her camping one time. I thought we connected beautifully camping, but there were rattlesnakes and copperheads and bugs. Dust, and so, seriously? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, but I, in, in, in your book, you mentioned setting up a tent in your backyard. Yes. It's a great idea to uh, to go make love and rekindle that relationship. So. Okay, so, but this is how that looks to me. Okay. That doesn't look like any old tent. Okay, <laughs> so, it's like, you know, I can't, you know, at 55, I can't sleep on a blow-up bed, okay? okay? So I saw this done. A friend of mine took that idea and, uh, and they, he made the most beautiful. Okay, so he he had his tent, and it was kind of it was pretty a big tent. Yeah. And uh, and it wasn't an expensive tent; it was just a big one. And they got those futons that are really comfortable. Yes. And he threw a big queen size futon in there. And then he had like rose petals, and Ooh. you know he just made it so it was a place that was really comfortable. It wasn't you know it wasn't like on dirt. You know right. it was just like really really comfortable with 
pillows okay. and sounds yeah. like out of Africa. Maybe yeah. if you were on an African safari with all the lanterns and yeah. and the, but as long as you have you know thousand count sheets in there yes. and, and, and feather pillows. And, and you can go on Pinterest yeah, yeah. and you can see really? get ideas from places like that. Yeah, well, what about rooftop? You mentioned, you mentioned rooftops also. Yes, a rooftop would be interesting, wow, right? Wow, yes, yeah. I, that, that would be um, unexplored territory Would it be for better me. if you Something had a flat quick. roof? <laughs> um, and not yeah. high-pitched. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like, high have you pitched. ever... There's, actually, there's a bar in town where you can go to the rooftop and not many people are on that rooftop. Oh, wow. um, I, can't really, I can't remember what it was called, but I, I went up there one time and I was looking around and I was like, hmm. Whoa. So, but, you know, not, it just depends. You know, is it a public rooftop or is it a private rooftop? Yeah. And some people, like you know, some there's some New Yorkers that live on that have access to rooftops that you can lock off. So. Okay, so far as we wrap up here, I want to know for our Valentine's Day special, mm -hmm. what are three things that you think a man should do for his Valentine on this on this Valentine's Day? Okay, so. She might want you to be spontaneous, and so a certain amount of sponta spontaneity is good, but I actually don't think when it comes to Valentine's Day, like, a woman starts to get nervous if her man has not planned anything. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to say, to not mess with her and say, I have something planned. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do that, you have to plan something. Yes. And if it's not, like, so my husband and I, we don't like ce celebrating Valentine's on the day. We mm -hmm. like waiting a couple days after. And I tell them, I like flowers. And actually, I like to go my, buy my own gift. Um, <laughs> what is my, you know, you know how much can yeah. I spend? And no, I really do. I Because I'm very particular. Th yeah. So those things make me happy. So again, it's, it, I think that uh, asking her, you know, what is the, that you would like? How do you see our mm -hmm. Valentine's going? Would you like to go to a restaurant? Would you, um, would you like flowers? And do you like, you know, find out what her favorite flowers are. And mm. I, I know these things sound cliche, but they actually work. Yeah. They actually work. And, and what, you know what, say, honey, what are your hopes and dreams? And you, and you think, what does that have to do with sex? Mm -hmm. That's everything. Knowing mm. what your significant other's hopes and dreams are for the future, yeah, for you, your lives together. Yes. Um, you'd be surprised just caring, just giving a shit yes, about right. about your significant yeah. other wow. is is um, can warm a woman's heart because I bet I bet you know when's the last time uh, that you have asked your your yeah. part your wife or your husband you know how, you know what their hopes and dreams are for the future and for each other and are you happy and if you could have if you could have me do one sexual thing to to just rock your world what would it be and then mm -hmm. do it yeah. and it, and actually. That works for the reverse too. I was going to say, and it may yes. involve chocolate. And it may involve chocolate, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It may involve going to a hotel room. It may involve going to taking a small trip, you yeah. know, well, or we're gonna local. Well, uh, we're going to be going away for a staycation here uh, yes. locally. So uh, we did plan a staycation, and I thought because uh, yeah. that way, you know, she's not going to say the ceiling needs painting yeah. or. Uh, <laughs> Right? The commode is running. Right. No, staycations are great. And yes. then if you can't do that, please just get a babysitter and, you know, take yeah. the reins on this. If yeah. you're a guy out there and you're listening, you know, get, make sure that babysitter is set up. And if, you know, again, Valentine's is a huge, that's, it's hard to find a babysitter on Valentine's day. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's Valentine's day. You get the flowers and say, we're going to celebrate next yeah the next night because I couldn't get a sitter for this night. But don't right. worry, our time together is coming and it's going to be fun and I love oh, you. No, I Woo. love that. Well, our time is ending here, but we're going to go over to uh, uh, Patreon and we are going to have more fun because we're going to get a little bit kinky Woo. and we're going to talk about vitamin O. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Please follow us on all social media and uh, the Ron Hall Show. And we will see you as you click on and go to our segment two on Patreon and join Beth and Dr. Natasha and me as your host. And I can't wait. This is going to be fun. See you soon.